wait, 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 wait. What do you like about this girl? I mean, there's like a lot of things I'd probably start with. I like the way she smiles. She got me staring for a while. Got me staring for a while. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's our conversation. She's my favorite notification. She knows how to dress for special occasions. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. A lot of you have been asking how I predict my handwriting for different languages in my previous video. So today I'll be sharing some of my favorite techniques to make your handwriting clearer and neater, especially for Chinese, Japanese, Korean and Thai. Mastering handwriting can be both rewarding and quite challenging. I know some of you may be wondering, with all the time it takes to learn to write by hand, is it really worth it? With so many digital input methods based on pronunciation, is handwriting even necessary? Well, it all comes down to your goals. If you're focused solely on speaking, then skipping handwriting might be just fine. But if you're aiming to read, write, or even perfect your penmanship, this video is for you. First things first, master the basics of stroke order. This is crucial for many languages especially those that use characters rather than alphabets. In Chinese and Japanese, stroke order isn't just for aesthetics, it is functional. Even in simpler scripts like Hangul, Korean, and alphabet-based ones like Thai, following the right stroke order helps maintain clarity and flow in handwriting. Proper sequence creates balanced characters and makes them easier to remember. When practicing Chinese and Japanese characters, Focus on mastering individual strokes, especially like this, first before forming complete characters. Pay attention to your stroke motion. Start slow with more pressure and gradually lighten as you lift the pen at the end of the stroke. This technique is key to avoiding cramped or awkward looking characters like this. Practicing stroke order regularly will make your handwriting look more natural over time. So give yourself enough time to practice and master stroke orders from the start. Also, when you just start practicing to write, start with writing the characters big. It will be easier for you to get comfortable first with the proper strokes to later on write them in a smaller format. Moving on to that is writing letters consistently in terms of their height, spacing, and angles with each other. This is the key to making your handwriting look neat, no matter which style of letter shape you use. One of the best ways to improve is using grid paper, as the grid lines help keep your characters or letters proportional. When I started with Chinese and Japanese, I first used mitsuke called rice grid paper, then field paper, then switch to empty grid paper and eventually lined paper. For Korean, I began with medium-sized grids, move on to smaller grids to refine spacing, alignment, and size, and finally transitioned to lined paper. For Thai, I used three lined paper until I was confident with the alphabet before progressing to lined paper. So when you are just starting to predict, don't write on a blank sheet with no lines. Try to predict writing in sheets that have lines or grids. One thing, when predicting, don't just blindly write repeatedly, but focus on the proportions or ratios of each character, especially for Chinese and Japanese kanji. The next one is learn from a good reference. This is super important because in any language, there are a lot of fonts that are not styles like handwriting. Look for handwriting samples that are clear, aesthetically pleasing, and follow proper stroke order like this. Predicting calligraphy is also a great way to improve your handwriting. And by calligraphy, I mean simple, easy to write styles that are still beautifully crafted, not the overly complex ones. Whether it's Chinese calligraphy or Japanese shodo, the slow, deliberate strokes required in calligraphy can significantly enhance your control, precision, and understanding of each script. Even if you're not aiming to become a calligraphy expert, Integrating these techniques into your practice routine can help make your writing more balanced, consistent, and elegant in any language. The meditative nature of calligraphy also offers a deep connection to the characters you are learning, making it both a creative and practical way to improve your penmanship. Moving on to that is choose the right tool. You could spend a lot of money on fancy brushes or fountain pens, 
if you really want to learn calligraphy, but for most people, including me, it's not necessary. For me, just neat and clear handwriting is enough. There are so many different types of pens out there, ballpoint pen, gel pen, fountain pen, ruler pen, and more. But choosing the right pen is key to improving your handwriting in any language. Personally, I prefer using a fine-tipped gel pen, especially 0.5mm, because it allows for precise clean lines. Perfect for intricate characters in Chinese, Japanese, and even Korean. For Thai, I love using Stadler Tripless Fine Liners 0.3mm because the Thai script has a lot of curves and the fine tip helps keep my writing neat and consistent. Muji Cap Thai Gel Ink Pen is also my go-to because of its ink prevention mechanism. But of course, it's all about what works best for you. So experiment with different pen types until you find the one that feels most natural and gives you the control you need for your handwriting style. The next tip is embrace the process. Adapting a I can do it mindset is essential when practicing language handwriting. Trust in your ability to improve and remind yourself that progress is possible with consistent effort. Embrace the learning process with patience, knowing that every stroke brings you closer to mastering the characters. Take a few deep breaths before beginning and remind yourself that the goal is quality, not speed. Focus on each stroke maintaining a steady pace and mindfulness with every character. By maintaining a positive attitude, you reinforce the belief that challenges are opportunities to grow, which can transform handwriting practice into a rewarding and motivating experience. Last but not least, make handwriting practice a fun part of your daily routine. Incorporate tools that spark dry, like colorful pens, cute notebooks, and even bullet journals or personalized stationery. You could try setting small goals or challenges, like writing your favorite codes or doodling alongside your letters. When handwriting becomes a creative activity, instead of a core, you will find yourself practicing more often without even realizing it, and those more consistent efforts will lead to noticeable improvements over time. Plus, there's something incredibly satisfying about flipping through a notebook filled with neat, stylish handwriting. It makes the practice all more rewarding. And there you have it. Improving your handwriting takes time, patience, and consistent practice. But with dedication and the right approach, you will be writing beautifully in no time, whether it's in Chinese, Japanese, Thai, Korean, or any other language. Remember, Everyone's handwriting journey is unique, so don't get discouraged if progress feels low at first. Let me know in the comments which tip you found the most helpful and if you have any of your own handwriting tips to share. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.